Okay, so um, good morning once again, my friends, and uh, we welcome you to uh, this Independence Day edition of um, our Excel 25.2 tutorial. As we know, Nigeria is um, 62 years, and um, today is a public holiday, and so we wanted to use this opportunity to review what we did last time, since there were a lot of uh, questions, a lot of requests for more time. And so we felt that we can use a whole one hour, or if possible, an hour and a few minutes. We'll take it slower than we did before. And we are going to incorporate a practice session in today's edition. So. It's going to be uh, a mirror of what our paid tutorial looks like. So what we are looking at, remember that we are focusing on three key steps in business data intelligence. And we say that the first one is you need to ensure that your data is well structured and in the right format. We discover that the data that we may be presented with to analyze may come in formats that it may not be easy to analyze them. So we need to change them into a format that we can analyze and then structure them in a uh, arrangement. And so the, that arrangement is a table where all the data are captured according to their headers. So in today's uh, scenario, we are looking at data that has been presented to us in text format. And we are going to see how we'll be able to convert this text format to a number format that we can now transform and arrange into the tabular form which can now be made easy. So this is the beginning of the data that we are looking at. We have been informed that there are three states in the South-South region of Nigeria. Those states are Kwaibom, Bayelsa, and Rivers. And they submitted their daily sales reports for analysis. The management of the company felt um, we need to do something to improve our sales. And they have requested for an expert in spreadsheet analysis. And so this is before us. So the details are that the sales are from the 7th of June, 2022, and runs for five days. So that means we have 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. So these are the five days sales that each state presented. And so we are to look at this, apply some form of analysis and advise the management on what to do to improve sales. Now, when we look at data, we can extract some insights that will tell us the story it will tell us what is happening, what is influencing, what could be influencing one thing while what sales or the performance. And so when we are able to extract that, we can deduce an advice. So what the data is going to let us know is, uh, is descriptive. We can use it to also prescribe. We can also use it to predict. Okay, so we looked at that during our very first session. So now, Aquaibom has five staff with their names mentioned as indicated, and they have these sales. Joan, James, Kenneth, Peter, and Helen. These were what they reported. And then, Bayesa also had five staff. Marklin, Albert, Chris, Lawrence, and Julia. And then Rivers had six staff. 
and these were their um, sales. Debbie, Patricia, Victor, Grace, Hawa, and John. Now, the task is for us to analyze and make recommendations. What would be our advice? Now, we went ahead to give us some clues. And these include, first, we need to extract all the data and align them under header columns. Extracting the data, because the data is in a, in a text format, we cannot analyze text, I see? But when we transform them into numbers, then we'll be able to have what to analyze. And then we'll put them into under header columns. And then remember that there are three states. So each state will have its own header columns. And then we'll now bring all the three states into one. Then we'll now try to see if there is any insight, that's intelligence, that the story will be telling us, uh, the data will be telling us. So we can do this at the state level, and then we can do it at the organizational level. At the organizational level, that's combining all the three states data into one. And then we can say one or two things. So what will also help us is, is it possible for us to identify the top performing staff, either on each state level or at the organizational level? Like I say, we can run all of them at the same time. Our advice may be this and this and this staff, irrespective of their state, they were able to do well. And so we may do a staff focus intervention, which means we will not just say we are supporting the state, we might say we are just supporting individuals because of what they hold. And those things they hold will be shown in the data. So that's why it's good for us to do them individually and then also collectively at the state level. So who are the top performing staff? What are their characteristics? So when we talk about characteristics, you know that there are certain things about an individual that can affect his or her performance. Number one, gender. It is not because uh, um, we are promoting gender inequality, but it may be something that the data might be speaking on. It might be the story that the data is telling us, so we need to look at it. Sometimes, and I'm sure most of us uh, will agree to this, ladies tend to sell more than males in some kind of businesses. So we want to find out is there a trend along the gender status? Now, we also know that there might be differences in the days of sales, depending whether the sales is, I mean, happen early in the week or towards the weekend. So these are the things we also need to find out. So when you are analyzing, there are some key skills as an analyst that you should have. And that includes analytical skills, like problem solving skills, like critical reasoning, asking some pertinent questions. So these are some of the questions that you may just want to uh, explore in your mind. Now, when you look at these questions, we talk about characteristics. The company did not request, did not give us some other, like the um, um, the biomedic uh, 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 biometrics of the staff. We can also decide to ask about some of them. Maybe we might request: Can we see their age? Can we see their genders? Anything you feel will help you. So those are some of that, those are the areas where your critical reasoning and problem solving skills can come into play. All right, so that is where we are. So we, when we requested for staff details, these were the things that they gave. We might go ahead and say, okay, can we have their age disaggregation? And then we can be given that. All right, so 
those are the questions. You can also see them as we drop them in the WhatsApp uh, forum. So right now, we are going to look at what we are going to be, uh, what we expect to see. So I'm going to share my screen, displaying the different steps that we need to uh, take. We have been guided by those clues. And so this is the first step. Let me zoom this. So the first step says, copy and paste the text data on to spreadsheet. So this is what we have done for our quiet bomb. We copied that, I will paste them here. Then we copied also for Bayesa, and we pasted them here. And then we pasted for River here. And then what? when we applied what we applied, we ran into an error. And so this was deliberate so that we can guard against that. Sometimes it's when you are dealing, when you have uh, attempted or you have tried um, several examples on a particular concept that you can actually know that there might be a problem. So if we had continued with this kind of data where we don't have a thousand separator, like you can see on here, we have a thousand here, which is 1,001 and 1,285. But we didn't use the 1,000 separator here. However, when we came here, we used it. So we needed to display the error that may come in when we do this. And that's why we had it here. And then we corrected it here. You can see that this river is the same thing as this. The only difference now is that we remove the thousand separators from the thousand values here. We remove them there. Okay, so once we are done with this first step, the next step is to, I think I have to unfreeze this. Let me unfreeze this. And then let me just uh, freeze the first top row, good. So the next step is to do this. And that is telling us uh, we used to, we need to use a column feature, text to column feature in Excel to separate those text into columns. And then once we do that, this is what we are going to have. So let me zoom out. You will see that this is what has been transformed into this. All right, so after that, the third one is that we should now convert this array here into an Excel official table, okay? Does it mean that there is a table that is not Excel official? Yes. Let me zoom out on this again. You will see that here, this is the beginning of this uh, extracted data for a quiet bomb. It is, uh, Okay, I think we have, we converted this to table. So we convert this to table and it becomes this. Otherwise, see here, it's the same thing with this. Here, this is not an official Excel table, but here it is. And you will see, notice this, uh, if I click inside this, over here, where my cursor is hovering over, you will see table design because it is here, I clicked here. But if I come over here, and click inside, this will go off, signifying that this is not an official table. So if I click here, the table design option is off. But if I click here, it's back again. So we'll see how helpful that will uh, be when we are working on uh, Excel. And then the next uh, step is to now convert this into queries. So this will convert this into queries. This is our table. We convert them into query. And then each of the state query 
we can now combine them in a connection. So this, we'll see how this becomes a query and we'll see how the three queries are combined into this connection. So you can see the state here, this is rivers, scroll down, you see a quiet bomb and each one has each of this stuff and displaying the dates, the different dates from 7th to 11th to, and with their corresponding sales, with their corresponding gender. These were not done um, manually one by one, but with the help of some features and clicks. So this is where we hope to reach. Once we get to this point, we have structured our data in the right format, and we have arranged the data in the right um, tabular manner that we can now begin our analysis. Okay, so at this point, before we start the, um, the actual demonstration, we are going to pause if there are some questions. Let's just take the next um, two minutes to ask the questions by typing. And um, we know that there are some who may not be fast in typing or who may not prefer to type, or maybe because of the device they are using, they want to uh, speak. So raise your hand and then we'll respond before we go into the actual demonstration. So um, the first hand we have raised is Dr. Bello. So just a minute so that you can be allowed to speak. Okay, so go ahead and unmute and speak, Dr. Bello. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, the moderator. Please, uh, I want to ask, how do you separate the thousand um, commas? Okay, you mean to remove the thousand uh, separator? Yes, please. Yes, it's just to click in any, for instance, um, let's come to uh, Bayesa. Is it Bayesa? No, reverse here. For instance, let's look at this yellow colored. Just click on, double click there, you delete it. You come over here, delete it, because these are not in each cell. But if it were in each cell, if each value were in each cell, we just go to number format and then remove the thousand separator. So but because they are in text format, we need to click right inside and then take the cursor to that point and then delete it. Okay, I hope that helped. Okay, so um, there are no questions, no hand raised. So that means we are good to go with uh, the demonstration. Okay, so um, I'm going to pull this down and share, uh, let me share another one that we are going to use as our answers. Okay, so, I'm going ahead to insert a new and uh, okay, so I think I don't need to insert a new one. Let me just delete here. I think this was where we where we did the first we stopped the first time. So we have this copied out from uh, the PowerPoint. And so the next thing we are going to do is to separate this into columns. And what we say we'll do is we are going to select this. We have finished the first step. We are going on to the second step, which we are going to use the text to column feature to separate this and put them in columns. I have selected what I want to work on. I'm coming to my data tab here. I'm going straight to my data tools. And right here, I have the first one, text to column. And it's going to split 
one single column of text into multiple columns. See the function of this text to columns. It's going to split a single column of text into multiple columns. We are looking at column A, it's only one column, but let's see how many columns we can split this into by using this feature. So I click here and this dialog comes up. So this dialog is asking me to choose what best describes this, my data. If you look at this data, it is separated by delimiters. Delimiters are, are some characters that separate your text or your data. If we look at this, there were several things. Let's say two basic things that separate our data. One is the space. You can see space is separating Joanne from submitted and, and also separating submitted from daily and so on and so forth. Number two, we also have commas. So those are my delimiters. So I'm going to interact with this wizard here and I'm saying, yes, I have delimiters. So having selected this, I'm going ahead to click next. Now, since I said there are delimiters, what are they? I'm going to be selecting the one after the other. And as I select them here, see what is going to be happening to my preview here, the data that I have. So the first one is comma. So wherever we had comma, we see that a column is inserted. Right now here, on this other side, we don't have comma here, but what has separated, and we are interested in these numbers here, these first numbers here. So what is separating them is space. So if I go ahead and click space here, it's going to also separate them. But it's not only going to separate these values here, it will also separate all the other text that are separated by the space. So this looks good. If I went ahead to click finish here, this will be deposited here. So that means, all this will be replaced by the new uh, separated data. But that's not what I want. I want to take them to another location. And so I click next rather than clicking finish. I click next. Now in my next now, I need to identify the destination. So the destination is going to happen. If I click A3, that means the very beginning of my data will be on A3. So I'm going to collapse this and then pinpoint somewhere. So if I pinpoint here, this is my C3 and I'm going to open it and then click finish. So my once data that were contained in one column has now been splitted into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth, as we can see. So this looks good also. Now we need to do some uh, formatting. So the formatting is that we are going to sh delete some cells, shift some cells, and do some other things that we want to do to bring our data in alignment. As we see in our analysis, we don't need this text anymore. So I've highlighted them and I'm going to click delete. Now, wherever you see delete with dots or any function with dots, it means there are other prompts that you need that you will receive to select an option. So I check this, it's asking me, what do I need to do if they delete this? I say, okay, shift the cells to the left so that these ones will move towards D. Go ahead. 
I don't want this also. Delete it and shift it to the left. I don't want this. Delete and shift to the left. And so that happens. So this looks good. This is what we want. So remember the first feature that we can use here when we discussed our tutorial one was using flash fill. But we didn't use flash fill here, which looks good. But assuming we don't want this bullet points, these signs of bullet points in front of the names, and we just want the right, the only names to appear, we can go ahead and use our flash fill. So let's say Joan, enter control E. So all these have been duplicated from here. Okay. Then if we want now, assuming we don't want this, there's another feature that is not outside this um, training, but I'm just going ahead to apply it. So I'm going to right click this, drop it here, use this. And so I'm going to click this. Now we can begin to give headers to our table data. So here is staff. Here is 7th of June, 22. So I can simply go drag and drop here. Okay, let me just double click this. And then here, let also have states. So because all these are from Akwai Bomb, Akwai Bomb, they are all down here. We may also decide to say sex or gender. If we go to the detail that we were given regarding the staff details, we can know that uh, here is a female, James is male, male for Kenneth, male for Peter, female for Helen. So this is good to go. We can apply borders. We can apply borders. Now, this is where we have arrived. Please note that this is not a complete, um, well-arranged column data. It is semi-structured data in the sense that this is correct because all these are under a header. This is correct because these are under a header. This is correct because these are under a header. But this, they ought to come under the header called date. So this is where we are going to employ Power Query. So Power Query is a very powerful tool in Excel that we use to transform data, flip our data around to get what we want in just few clicks. If I was to do this manually, I will come here and put a date somewhere and select Joan for this date put here, select uh, Joan for the next date, put it under and so on and so forth. It's going to take me a long time, but I will do it. But when we use features that help us to achieve what we want to achieve in lesser time, that's great. All right, so we have done this. I'm going to uh, repeat the same process for Bayersa, and then we will do for Rivers. Okay, so I'm going to be a little bit faster now so that um, we can make up for time. So I am selecting this. I'm coming to my data. I'm coming to click on text to column. Yes, uh, it is separated by the limiters. Next, the limiters are the commas, the space. The reason why these are already selected is because I've just used them a while ago. 
And so I'm going to select a point here, which is here, and I drop it here. I don't want this, so I'm deleting them and I'm shifting towards the left. These two, they should go. We don't need them and move to the left. The same thing with this, we delete, we move to the left. Right now we have this. So if I like, I can go ahead and write Mark clean. Hope the spelling is correct because if the spelling is not correct, your flash field will not give you what you want. Okay. So here is Bayelsa. And again, since these are the same, so I'm going ahead to click this, copy it, drop it here, and then come over here. McLean is male, Albert is male, Chris is male, Lawrence is male, Julia is female. Right? So here we go with the second set. But this is not. Um, this is not the table that we want. And like I explained in this first instance, but we are going to use Power Query to flip that around. All right, so at this point, again, we are going to open up for questions. And then thereafter, we are going to give ourselves five minutes to do the tool. Okay, 10 minutes because from your own end, you don't have this worked out so we're going to give you 10 minutes to do a quiet bomb by Elsa and rivers. Please, when you are doing rivers, make sure you remove these thousand separators so that you won't have errors. Okay, so there we go. Two minutes for questions if there are. If there are no questions, then 10, 50, then we are good to go on our own. Okay, one hand is up. MM Paul, please go ahead and speak. Good morning. Thank you so much. Please, um, when you were doing the, when you were copying those names, you know, to the other side, to the left hand side, I, I, I didn't really get it there. So I want to understand how it was done. Thank you. Okay, please. Uh, in order not to waste time, just go ahead and copy and paste. What I did oh. was, uh, it might take a while to explain that. Okay, well, let me let me attempt that. See, if I selected this, or what I selected, it has a frame. So I can just go there, point at any point on the frame, and then rather than left click and holding and dragging, rather than left clicking, holding and dragging, I'm going to apply the right click. So when you click on the right and you move it, so you have the option, I hope you can see what I'm doing. You yes, have I the can. option of once you release your hand, you will now have the option of what you want to do. So okay. you go ahead and click values only. And then you, when you click here, it pastes it there. And then you still have that data there. So it's different from clicking like this and dragging, which means this will go off. And even if you do that and you are placing it on top of another uh, value, it will tell you that it contains some values already, whether okay. you need to replace it. And sometimes if what, if you, what, what you picked is going to a merge cell, it will not agree. But once you do it the other way, by right clicking, holding and dragging out, you will have that option to do so. So that's what happened. Thank you. Thank you. I think the next hand is Amma. Please go ahead and speak. Okay, good morning, sir. My question is um, when you when you went to text to columns. So I understood up to the point where you had the delimiters and where you choose the part i didn't get was because i just tried it and it's still showing me that the, um 
the names are far away, are still in column A. How do I get to choose um, that it should appear on column C or B? Or okay, wherever so, it is I want it to be together. Okay, you need to continue on text and uh, next, next. Then when you come to the where the finish is, the only thing that is highlighted, not next, see this destination. Watch out for this destination. So you collapse it so that you can, either you collapse it or you click inside and then go and now click wherever you want it to appear. But it's better you collapse so that you can see the space, then go to somewhere and click. So that's where you, once you see, you click until you get to destination, then you can now choose where you want it to uh, be dropped. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thanks yeah, for your questions. And um, let's have the next 10 minutes, which will take us to a few minutes after 11 to complete your assignment. So welcome back from the practice session. And the next thing we are going to do is to make this official table. As always, it's good to leave space between, um, between your table. So what I'm going to do is, because I want to separate this from the official table that we are going to create. So I'm going ahead to copy all this. You don't necessarily need this. Don't necessarily need to copy this and paste it somewhere else. But I'm doing this because I want to show the difference between an official table and ordinary array. All right, so this and this are the same, but right now I'm going to apply table here and then this will remain the way it is. So what I need to do is there are two ways I can do this. So I click inside here. I come over to my tab here, this insert, and I click tables. So when I click this table, what kind of table? Is it pivot table? Is it recommended pivot or ordinary table? So this is the one that I want. Already this is the second way to do it by clicking, pressing control T. But let's go here. We click this and then intuitively has seen or detected that there is something that looks like table that we want to get, we want to convert into table. Yes, he was right to do this. And my, does my table has headers? Yes, it has headers. So I go ahead and click OK. Just a minute. OK, so yes, this is what we have. Yes, sir. yes please. Please, can you just, um, you know, you just started this process. Please, can you just start again? Because when you were doing this stuff, mine was not showing. I think it was as a result of my network. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do the second one and the third one, and then it will be clearer. Okay? All right. All right. So this is what we have here. And I'm going to convert this, our array here, to table. So clicking inside here, I can go ahead and hit control T. T as in total, control T. And then this create table wizard pops up. Again, because of the way I arrange this, my data, Excel is already predicting that this could be where I want to insert the table. And if it is good, I click okay. But before I click OK, I want to be sure that this my table, my table has headers is checked so that it can create headers. If this is not checked, it's going to create another header here and insert column one, column two, column three, and so on and so forth. Let's see that. You see, it has created column one, column two, and so on and so forth. But this is not what I want. This were my headers. So I'm going to control X, that is undo. Again, I want to tell us if I click here, assuming I click somewhere here and I hit control T, it's selecting this, this is not what I want. 
So for me to now say, okay, I'm directing you to where I want. I can come here and do co check the correct one that I want. Okay, so whenever you apply a feature and Excel tries to predict and gives you what he has thought could be your uh, a suggestion, he will show you that in dotted, um, dotted uh, lines circling that particular selection. So if it is good to go, I click OK. Now you would notice that automatically, the tables that are official, they have this drop down for filter, this icon for filter automatically inserted. That's number one. Number two, the roads are banded. You can see here is a light blue, no color, and so on and so forth. There are several advantages of this, over 10 or so many of them that uh, we will dis we discuss more in detail in the paid version. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing in this one. So you see that you go back, come to click here, but I like to use the short for shortcut, Control T, and this goes. Now you will see that once I click here, this table design is activated, which means this is table. This looks like it, but it's not the same. It's not, it's not table. So I'm going ahead to click here. And because it's not a table, that table design option is off. When I click here, this table design comes up. I can open the design. Assuming I don't want any color, I don't want anything, I click this. But still, that does not make it like the other one. You can still see this table design is here. I might also go ahead and remove this filter, which is not what I want. Now, whenever you see your, you set up your table and you see this here, try to find out what that is, because sometimes it may lead you to an error, but sometimes it does not, but you just need to know what it is. So this is saying, when you open here and check, you say it contains a date string represented with only two digits for the year. So it is expecting that it should be 2022. That is 202022. Okay, now, so let's see. Uh, if we say, assuming here now is uh, 7 June 2022. Okay, it's still because of the type of formatting that we applied is only two. So but we are okay with it. It's not a problem. So we can say ignore, ignore error. You can either ignore error or just leave it since you know it does not impact on your, what you are setting up. And if you wanted to convert this to 20 something something, let's see this first one, what, how it will happen. Uh, this, it's not aligned. So sometimes when I look at this and it's the error that doesn't matter, I go ahead and leave it or I'll change it. So depending on your time, you can ignore this because it's not going to impact on what we are doing. Okay, so I've tried to remove that error, ignore error on this, but it's still the same thing. It's going to, we are going to get the same answer. All right, so probably I don't like this this colors. Let's remove them. Let's also remove, uh, so yes, my data. Let's remove this. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to give us just one minute to change this into a table, official Excel table between this and this. Please, can we do that before we go into query? We are now set to delve into Power Query now that we have this. Please take time. Let's say two minutes. This is 11.26, 11.28, we will uh, begin the Power Query uh, work. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to use Power Query 
to make this at least one, two, this is one header from here to here will be second header. This is three and this is four. Let's see if we can get four headers out of this. If we're able to get four headers, that means our data structure will be fine. So now we'll come to data here. I don't know the version of Excel you are using, but the one I'm using, I need to come over here to get and transform data. Please, I want those of us that are actively participating to check if you have Power Query. This is the Power Query. If it is not enabled, you may not. You may have to do that for the first time. So let me know if you have it so that we can guide you on how to get it up on your ribbon. Well, I'm using Office 365. Okay, get that, that's fine. I'm using Office 365, but uh, Power Query has been around also, I guess so. No, forget about the Kutul. tool. Are you using the Kutul tool or you're talking, with, are you referring to mine? My Kutul um, uh, version is paid, but I'm not using it right now because uh, I can't find, I can't, I tried, I, I deleted my, this is some time back. I can't find the, uh, the code, but they are just there. When I'm doing work that requires it, then I can activate it, but it's, I'm not using Kutul now. Okay, once you get get and transform, that's fine. Who else does not see that? Well, I it seems we shall we should just go ahead because nobody is complaining. So now what I'm going to do is when you come to get and transform there are different places you can you can get that you can get data from there are different places you can hit here and then you can get it from a file these are the different this thing like text you can see the text you can get it from uh, hmx you can get it from several places you can even get it from database from azure this microsoft azure from power several places but for us, we are working on a table and array. So this is where we are going to get. So from table or range. Now I'm going to show something because I am clicking right here. Okay, let me click S where. I'm clicking S where that is not the table. I'm clicking this. So it's going to ask me to select the array. Where is my table? for it. So this is one of the reasons why we had to go ahead and create the table. So assuming that we didn't create the table, it will require us, it will require us to select this and then create a table. Then we can click this. But we already done that. So I'm going to escape. And then I'm going to click inside this table that we had already created. And I'm coming to click here from table. Automatically, it detects that this is a table because we had already transformed that or insert, converted it to a table. Now it brings us to this point. This is where the Power Query interacts with us to transform what we need to transform. Now, for every tool, you should learn what you use often. So we are going to transform this. There are different things you can do with part, uh, 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 Power Query. So for us, we know that this is fine, the staff. And then when we look at the extreme end, 
the sex is fine, the state is fine. But these ones, the remaining ones, where the dates are, we want to flip them so that they can become arranged under one header, which is date. So there are different things you can note from this. Right here, this is my table that we are working on. Remember when we created that table, we did not give it a name. Now, let me exit here. Let me exit this table uh, query and discard. I want to show us something. So this is my table. This is my table design. Right here, I have table one, which was what we saw in the power query. So right here, I'm going to create a name. This is for Aquaibom, Aquaibom, representing this name. But I'm going to save this table according to this name, but I'm going to run into an error, which will guide us subsequently. I enter. I need to ensure that there is no space in the name. There is a space between aqua and ebom. So I'm going to now say this is aqua underscore ebom. I enter. This officially becomes the name. And by the time we go to Power Query and we want to get data from this, you will see the name there. Will no longer be table one, it will be a quiet bomb. So the same thing here. I'm going to name it instead of table three. This is by Yelsa by Yelsa. Enter. Then the third one is river. Instead of table four, rivers. Enter. Now let's go back to our power, power query. So I've selected here. I'm going to my data getting my data from table or range. It's loading. And once it's loaded, right here, we see aqua underscore ebom. Now applied steps here will tell us every step that we have taken is being documented by Power Query. So if you want to reverse them, just go there and delete it and it reverse back to the original. So the first thing that we want to do is we want the staff name to be here, followed by the state and followed by the sex. Or we'll start with state, then look at the staff and the sex. Whichever way we want to do it is left to our own discretion. So for me, I want to use state first. So let's scroll to where our state is. Our state is here. I can right click this and I'm going to move it to the beginning. Move to beginning. So now I have my quiet bomb, which is the, sorry, the state. Then I have the staff. Okay, they say I'm fast. So let me slow down a bit. So what I have done is I am trying to move my columns to how I want them. You may want your own separately. You may decide to have the date first. You may decide to have the sex first. You may decide to have the staff first. For me, I want to start with the state. Then I will have the staff. And then I will have the sex. So my step is here. Let's see what we can do. I have right clicked on it. See where I had to click. I had to click right on the top, not in any of the rules, but the header. And then it selects everything. And I'm going to right click to get these options. So if I'm to move, I can move them individually or straight to the left, I mean, to the end or to the beginning. If I move this to the left, it has moved to this point. 
I can also do it again, move to the left again. I can continue to do this, move to the left. If time permits me, I can be playing around with this left. I can move until I get to where I want it to be, which is here. But if I don't want that, it's too long, I can click this, hold and drag it and drop it at the position I want. I'm going to apply that the way we are working on the other states. But right now, let's flip this. So I have my state in the right order. I have my staff. I have the sex. The remaining one are these dates. So I want to flip them around so that all of them can be arranged under the same header called date. There are different ways we can do this. I'm going to apply this. So I'm going to select this. I'm holding down my shift button and coming to select up to this point. These are good. They are good, but the rest are not good for me. So I right click and I'm going to do what? I'm going to unpivot other columns. Unpivot other columns. That means I will pivot the columns that are not selected because I have selected three columns, which I think they are fine. And I'm going now to unpivot the other columns. So I'm going ahead to click it and then it has transformed that now. So I have this, I have this, I have this. This is my date and these are the values. So if you look at this now, in a Quibon state, this Joanne is a female and on seventh, this was the sales. If we go back to the original table, you will see that it's the same value. The same staff, who is also a female on the eighth, got these saves. So I just need to do some other transformation right now. This name is fine because this is the staff. This sex is fine. These are dates. And if you look at the arrangement, the alignment is by the left, which means it is not a number but a text, but dates are stored as numbers. So there are two things I'm going to do now. First is to rename it. And secondly, to ensure that Power Query recognizes this as a date. So I'm, I'm going to double click inside here and write date. This is what I want. Changing the name to date still does not transform this data to be seen or considered as date. As you can see, these are text. And you see the icon is ABC, which means it's text. Sex is text. You can see the icon here, ABC. Date is supposed to be number, but you seeing it as text. That is why you see ABC. Then here, value, we can also change this as our sales. So this is our sales and this is number. You can see automatically it aligns to the right. So what do we need to do here to transform this text to date? I can click this icon here and these different options will appear. Here, I have my date. So when I go ahead and click this date, I have informed Power Query that this column should be treated as date. So when I click here, it transforms this and brings them as date. Already you can see the icon has changed to date. You can see the alignment also has turned towards the right. And like I informed you, text are stored on the left and numbers are stored on the right. And dates in Excel are stored as numbers. So with this, 
we've been able to transform our, um, which state is this? Acquire bomb table of sales into this power query table. You can see the applied steps here. So each one that we do, we can delete and then repeat again. So right now we are good to go. And what do we need to do? We'll come over here because we want to use this for connection. Remember, we need to connect the three. We need to connect the three. So we can come over here and click close and load to. There's a difference between this and this. If I choose to close and load, now it will now just load it as a table. But if I choose the other one, then I will now be able to put it somewhere that I can use for future uh, purpose. Now, the difference between Power Query and Pivot Table. Power Query is what you use to transform and arrange your data, while the Pivot Table is what you use to analyze. You use your Power Query to arrange the tables. It's Power Query. And then you can now load it to a table or you load it to a Pivot Table or Power Pivot. So power pivot and pivot table, they are the same. They are used to analyze. So I want to load here and I'm loading too. So the options will come up. I hope you are seeing this option here. It's either I load it to a table. So if I load it to a table, it will also appear as a query table for acquire bomb, but now it's no longer in this in this format that we can see here. It's now loaded in a table that has staff, state, sex, date, and sales. So, but for the interest of what we are doing, I'm only going to load here, only create connection, because I'm going to connect the three states. So when I click OK, is going to drop it here. A quiet bomb query is ready for connection. So I'll do the same thing for Bielsa. So I'm going ahead to click here in Bielsa. And OK, let me pause here and find out if there are questions before we continue. So we are going to create a query for Bielsa, and we start by getting our data from a table range. Because my cursor is on a table, it's going to go straight into that table. But if it was not on a table, it will open up a dialog, that wizard, table creating wizard for me to create a table. So that means queries can effectively work only with tables, or it will help you to convert your array to a table before it can work on it. So because I've selected a table that we have created, get and transform from a table and it automatically detects that table and it brings it to this environment so this is my power query environment where i need to do the things i want to do so what we need to do is we can transform this first or we can do the rearrangement. Assuming that we want to do the rearrangement later, let's just transform the ones that we do not want. 
So here, this is fine. But this, this, all the dates, they should be on the same, under the same column. So, depending on whichever way we want. Let's go the same route that we went the first time. Okay. If yours does not have transform, um, you may, it may be in another name. Okay, but we'll just explore that. After this, we'll see what we can do to look at that. So I have my staff here, but I want my state to come first. So this is my state. The last, in our last discussion, we right clicked and we used move, but I don't want to use this. I just want to hold this, click it and drag. You can see the header is moving and I want it to be at the beginning, right here. When I drop it, the staff now moves. I go again, pick the sex and drag it. Let it come after the staff. So here, after the sex, this, uh, the staff. So I have my state, my staff and the sex. So these are fine, these are fine. But these ones here, these dates, I need to, I need to change them. Amma, your hand is up. Please go ahead. Sir, so um, sorry to drag you back a bit, but the very first step that says get data, when I click it, what comes out is the Excel, um, those options. So my question is, which of the very first options do you do you go to because when i whenever i open that get data the very first option that comes out says from file from database or from azure so i'm wondering when i tried to click from the excel workbook it took me somewhere else it just went to my total excel sheets so i really don't that's the very first part i really don't get okay so um um what do i do now okay let me let me do we now stop this so that i can demonstrate okay so let me go and discard let me discard what we have done so far for biesta so i'm going to have to start again you come to get data there are different these things depending on the version you are using they are in different formats search for this one that says from table slash range you must see it somewhere there it might not be here i didn't go through here i didn't go through here but what the option that i chose was this one here that says from table slash range because what we want is right here on the spreadsheet does that make sense or can you see that option? Yes, sir. I've seen the option. Good. So once we choose this, okay. Yes, the drag and drop can actually uh, work, but uh, it's going to replace if for ordinary spreadsheet. You need to select what you want to drop and drag, uh, drag and drop. But now it's, it's going to replace what you have in the spreadsheet. The other way is to copy the entire column in an ordinary spreadsheet, copy it, and then you now select where you want to drop it. And as you are dropping the uh, copied cell, it's going to create a new column and drop what you have copied and then shift the other one to the uh, to the right to the left or to the right. So, but for the power query, what is already there, we just click, hold, and drag, and then 
we display the position. So mm -hmm. we can click here, drag, take it to the end. If that is what we want, like what I want here. So I put it to the beginning. Then I click, drag, and hold my sex column to immediately after the staff here. So this is good to go. All right. So I remember that we said these three are good to go. These three columns are good to go. Is the other columns that are not in the right arrangement that we want. Please, can we mute our mic? Thank you. So these other three, I'm going to select the first one, hold down my shift, and select the last one that I want. So these are good, but the other ones are not good. So I'm going to right click here and I say, the others that are not good, we want to unpivot them. So you can see here, unpivot other columns, unpivot other columns. So I click here. So the other ones have been unpivoted now, arranging it to the way that we wanted. So here, this is our date. Here, this is our sales. Now, because we want to connect Aquibom, Bayelsa, and Rivers, they must, we must make sure that they have the same headers and in the same order. If they are not in the same order, it's a different and advanced section of Power Query, which we are not covering in this tutorial. Assuming that you have uh, maybe if you are working with for countries or you're working for states or districts or regions, and each region is the same header, but they are arranged in different fashion. There is a way you can do that. And there's a lot of processes in Power Query that you need to apply. And then when you are merging them together, they are merged correctly. But for this, we assume that all the tables are in the same order. All right, so we have done this, but we need to change this to date. So we click this icon, change it to date. And then we have this. So now that we are done, we can now load this also to query, I mean, for connection. So I come over here under my home tab, click this close and load to. I click this. And I'm again going to drop it for connection. Over here, only create connection. I OK this. So it's now ready for connection. OK, having done this, I'm going to quickly do this on my own. I'm going to be a bit fast because uh, we have spent more than the maximum that we allocated. So we will allow you to do this at home and then uh, when we come back on tuesday that's tomorrow right we will now combine the three together we have to see how we are we have created them for connection only and then we'll see how we're able to connect them and then all of them will be in one table okay so just follow me along as i do this very quickly All right, so that brings us to the end of our connections.
I mean, uh, creating these queries for connection. So in our next session, we are going to connect these three queries into one table that we can now use to run our analysis. Tomorrow, we're actually supposed to start the analysis proper. You know, we segmented this into structuring our data, making it ready for analysis. Then the other one will be the main analysis itself. What features, what tools in Excel do we use for analysis? And then the next one will be, now that we have analyzed, how do we visualize the data? What features, what tools are we going to use? So uh, tomorrow we are going to round up with our data structure by running a connection. The last it is now, each of these state seeds is ready for analysis. Like this one now, we can click this one. This is a quiet bomb. We can click this and then it opens up for us to see. If we want to run analysis, remember I said that we could run analysis at the state level individually. So what we could do is we could load this one straight into an Excel sheet and it gives us the table. So I think let's just do that. Let me load this one, load and close. And it should create a table for me in that format. And um, do we see that? Let me see. I'm supposed to see somewhere. Did I, uh, I didn't choose destination. So where could this have been? Let me see. Um, where are my queries? Okay, so uh, let me just load this to where we can find it. This acquire bomb, I'm going to load it as a table and keep it somewhere. Um, let me load. Okay, I don't want this to be like, let me see. I can't remember, did I choose a, did I choose a destination? No. Okay, let's, I'll find out where it's loaded to. It's supposed to be created somewhere. It's supposed to be dropped somewhere as that table. Okay, so let's leave this when we come tomorrow we will do the connection and they will do the sep the each of them separately and then see where we can uh, find it. It's not on the second sheet. Is it here? It's not here. It's not here too. So let's get that. Um, every Each and every one of us should create the query ready for connection so that tomorrow we can do the rest. So thanks for your, thank you for being here and um, we hope you enjoy this. We will share the recording and then we look forward to meeting you tomorrow again for the final session of the data structure. So thanks and have a wonderful celebration to those of us in Nigeria. We hope to see everyone tomorrow. Goodbye. Okay, uh, from Samson, thank you very much. Okay, yes, ma'am. What time tomorrow, please? Tomorrow on yes. 7.30 p.m. Okay, and for those people that joined, I was uh, I forwarded it to some of my Zonal CCOs. How will they get the invite for tomorrow? We'll forward it to them. Okay, I will share that with you.